Hey guys, welcome to the awakening. Today is 60. <gasps> Day 60 of the awakening. Uh, or it could be 61 because um, I've been doing it for I think 61 days. Um, so anyway, something's going on here. It's slowing down again. I'm not sure why. Oh, there we go. So, what do I want to talk about today? Yesterday was not for the faint-hearted, and I'm happy that you watched it. Um, I'm happy you're watching the questions and answers, because I'm doing my best to be concise and clear and get out there what needs to be getting out there. Uh, today, I, I'm, I'm putting this on quite late, because I wanted to rest and take some time out. I've got some amazing positive news. Um, Mitchell Nicholas Gerber, our hero of the day, who does all the work with the Falun Dafa, and uh, he's, he's okay, he's got back to me, I'm so grateful, we're going to do another interview soon, oh, I, you know, it's just so amazing, it's like, what a great day when that happens, when you find out that one of your warrior friends is actually okay, they're alive, and they, I want to know now, I want to know what's going on, how much more work he's done, how, you know, it's just fascinating. So we're going to do a follow-up interview there. Um, but today I want to talk to you about the therapeutic community and how I survived in the therapeutic community and how the world has become like a therapeutic community. So taking you from the dark into the light. So the darkness is talking about a place where I was given the choice to go into to recover without medication. It was called the Therapeutic Community and it's all in Simply Amazing, the book, which is this book, which is my life story, and it is chapter eight. Um, basically, um, Lauren Hope, you can get it from me. I don't know if you can see Lauren Hope down there. You can get it from me uh, by ordering it from me or you can invite me to talk about my experience, which I'm trying to tell you now through the awakening, or you can uh, get it from the Positivity Center in Vernon and Ashton Lane. Okay, so let's come back to the therapeutic community, uh, basically the darkness. When I went in there, I was hit by a huge amount of bullying, a huge amount of confusion. People came in there with all of their issues and projected everything onto me because I was different. I didn't know what what was going on. Um, I was bullied when I wanted feta cheese because I didn't want to have dairy. I was going through the menopause and I was told I was nearly kicked out because everyone needed to have yellow cheese. Um, I've never told many people this, but I was refused toilet breaks. I wasn't allowed to go to the toilet because I was told it was in my mind. Um, that I needed to go to the loo when we had the groups uh, therapy and you're talking about a woman who's going through the menopause uh, similar to um, pregnancy all that pressure everything that's going on down below I was not allowed to go to the loo so I stopped drinking water for nearly two years I stopped drinking water for three days a week I used to go in there and I would not drink water because I was scared that I was going to be kicked out of the community. And if you think about it, there was nowhere else to go. I had the serious diagnosis of um, borderline personality disorder, and I had nowhere else to go. I wasn't getting on with anyone. Uh, I wasn't getting on with my husband. I had no friends. I had nowhere to live. Um, life was insane, and I could not cope anymore. And that's why I went to the doctor and got a diagnosis. Um, of borderline personality disorder, which is just complex needs and you're all walking around with it. Every single one of you has got this problem. Every single, uh, you're all walking around with it and you can use it in a positive way like I do now when I get up and I don't feel like I can cope with life. But this is why I'm here, taking you from the dark into the light, trying to help you to navigate all the madness. So anyway, to cut a long story short, this is some of the stuff I went through. So I stopped drinking water. Three days a week, I wouldn't drink any water at all. And that was from eight to three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, for a woman who's going through the menopause, as I say, 
that was quite serious and I'm not surprised I got problems now with my bladder. Um, that was eight years, that was 10 years ago when I went into the community and I was there, came out eight years ago and terrible problems with my bladder. But this happened on the NHS legally and that was because I had nowhere else to go. I did not want medication. I'm, I'm, I, there was good sides to everything, but this is the darkness in the therapeutic community was my own personal Holocaust. Now, someone like me that managed to get through this with a huge awakening because all the tough love led me to feeling like a tiny child. And I understood that I was holding on to the guilt um, of, of what, uh, of the fact that I thought it was my fault, my childhood abuse, and it wasn't, and I needed to understand that. So when I came out, I was able to understand that, and I was able to understand that it was my parents that sent me back. So that, that's the darkness. And now I feel like I'm living in the therapy community again, with total madness, not resonating with anyone, except you guys on Facebook. Um, my husband, thank God I can talk to him, the occasional friend. I can talk to the occasional friend. But most people out there, I feel there's nothing to say. And I've got this Charlie Ward and there's the guys that work with him. There's a huge awakening on Q, but you guys are on the internet. There's no one physical. I can't go shopping because there's no way on this planet I'm going to wear a mask. So, as I said... Um, We've got to a point now where we're living in this world of insanity, total insanity, and I feel like I'm back in the therapeutic community. <laughs> I'm back in the therapeutic community. So um, how am I going to deal with this today and take us from the darkness into the light? Sorry. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love it. Uh, anyway, that's the big kid in me, the little girl. So, how am I going to take us from the dark into the light? So, meditating today, meditating, lying with my feelings, going to the light, trying to understand a lot of what's going on, being very honest with some friends, just getting it all out there, saying the truth of how I feel, and getting some quite a lot of honesty back, which is nice. And with my husband, no more elephants, don't believe in them anymore. All the elephants are out there in the room now, they're not hidden. No more hidden elephants. So we're living in a therapeutic community. There's bullying, there's craziness, there's people that don't believe what we do and they're willing to put their lives on the line because they believe something else. And I cannot go to a shop because there's no way I'm going to wear a mask, there's no way I'm going to stand in the queue in the rain. But there's a part of me that understands something. And this is where the light comes in. Okay? And that part of me brought me to 100% in a piece where I lost the BPD over, over a period of eight months in the community. It disappeared and I had a massive awakening. Never been sick like that again. Confused, angry, frightened celebrating today that Mitchell's alive and that is amazing that's one of the best things that I could be celebrating is the return of a warrior who I'm going to interview I can't wait I can't wait to interview him again I'm praying for his safety um, and as you can see so that's the light good things happen today I went deep into that darkness and I meditated and I lay with it and asked for the light to come in and someone else came back uh, who's involved with my musical and we're going to do some work together. And, and so good stuff happened today after I went into that darkness and the honesty and the real gut feeling. You need to be honest with everyone now. So, but there's that part of me, and this is the light now, that is saying, how did you recover in the therapeutic community? Because at some point you surrendered. I surrendered. And those of us that surrendered healed. The others are back on drugs and uh, real drugs. I'm not talking about medication. Drugs, drink, uh, whatever they're back into. Few of us healed uh, because we did some work in there. I continuously worked in there and tried to learn about what was going on with me. 
And so now I'm working on something else, a much deeper level to do with life and death. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at death. I'm looking at the body. I'm looking at how do you live a long life when you're getting old? How do you start to get young? How do you start to vibrate? Like my friend Paul MacDonald says he vibrates so much now that 5G doesn't bother him. How can I do that? How can I vibrate like that? How can we teach people to do that so nothing worries us anymore? Even if they give you that needle, can you vibrate in a vibration where this is not going to affect you? If we don't stop it, if the world becomes crazy and even worse, is there a vibration we can go into where nothing can harm us? Wouldn't that be amazing? Where we can be so powerful, humans. Humans, not machines, humans. I don't want to be a machine. <laughs> I don't want you to be a machine. I want us to vibrate as a mixture of a technological, amazing, awake human that knows how to do everything, how to heal everything, how to fly, how to go in a time machine and change your life. Literally, go back to being seven years old. I go back to seven years old in Ireland and never have gone to Israel. I want to know what that would have been like. What would you like to go back to and change? You can do it in your mind, but I want to do it. I'd really love to do that. I want to go back and see mom and dad and sit with them and have a conversation with them without fighting, especially mom, because I did that with dad. I managed to heal my relationship with dad. There are so many things. I'd like to go back to being 30 again, 20, and having the wisdom and the knowledge that I have now to be what I could be now, then, to be young. Why can't I be young just because I'm wearing this suit of an older person? You can be young, you just have to figure it out. <laughs> you just have to get into that vibration and figure it out. And that's what I want to do now. That's what I want to do. So, taking you back to something woke me up in the community, in the TC, in the therapeutic community. Something woke me up, and I'm going to ask the book to open as it did. Okay? And it opened just before I went in to the community. Now, something happened in there that woke me up in such a big way that I am now what I am. It gave me total 100% in a piece then, and then I came out and, and the whole world went mad, and so... Now we're back there again, and I'm struggling the same as all of you. But what if I could get that again? Whatever it was that woke me up to that bliss for about eight months in the community after I woke up and I became an elder and people stopped bullying me and started listening and started walking away from me because they couldn't deal with me, because they couldn't heal me, so they pushed me away. So, because there was something in me they didn't want to look at. They didn't want to look at. So, what? <laughs> My husband has just walked under the laptop when he can't be seen because the camera is on me. <laughs> you see what we do in life? We do silly things in life that don't make sense. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, what I'm saying is, what happened to me that night when I woke up and said, don't let me go back? And I knew that I was saying to my father, don't let me go back to being abused. What, what is happening now that we can take in our lives in the madness, wear a mask, do this, all this lies and craziness? How can we become that, that spirit that I became after eight months in the community and understood and got it total in a piece, just overnight. What can I do? What, it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up. And this part of me said to me, well, just surrender. Just go back the same way you went back to the community, take the abuse, take the tough love, take whatever they're saying to you, say, just write it down, take it, keep taking it, keep taking it. And if they don't like it, they're gonna try and push you out again. If the world doesn't like it, they're gonna try and push you out again. These are big questions now we're asking ourselves. How do we survive now? 
And it used to say at the top, trust the process. Is that what we're meant to do? Maybe that's what I'm going to call this, trust the process. Because today, everything's come pouring out of me. And so synchronistically, I found out that, my, that Mitchell's alive. And I've been putting him out every day with his program, with the Falun Dafa, and I found out he's alive. He came back. And so the synchronicity and the honesty that's been pouring out of me has brought miracles back into my life. I'm not hiding, I'm not pretending. Maybe people think I'm fake because deep down inside this is what I'm really feeling, what I said yesterday. But isn't it interesting that in the community I had that massive awakening after eight months of total bullying, tough love, panic, fear, and I just stayed and stayed with it and stayed with it. I didn't run away. People said, you've got the skin of a rhinoceros. And the last time they tried to get rid of me, I said, why does everyone hate me? And I needed to go back and think about that. And that's when I had that awareness. And now I'm saying, I want more. <laughs> Give me another wake-up call. But you're giving me the wake-up call. The world is giving us all a wake-up call to wake up. It's mad, it's insane, it's the therapeutic community model of madness and insanity that we all created together. But give me that wake up call that I got in there. So I'm just going to read you a little bit where Casey says, well, first I would like, I said, I would like to recommend the therapeutic community to anybody who has a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. And Casey said, yes, please do. And I said, okay. If you're diagnosed, ask immediately for the therapeutic community. I'm going to push this time and time again because I do not believe there's any other way to manage this condition. It's just mind-blowing, Casey. You get 24 hours a day support. Where do you have that in life? You get behavioral contracts and everyone's an individual. So, for example, if you're someone that doesn't give enough to others, you'll be put on a contract to support more. Then you'll be put on a, uh, if you're someone who gives too much, you'll be put on a contract to protect and support yourself more. You're given discipline by having to help run the community. You're given authority by having to chair some meetings. You're given continuous therapy and you're given a bell to ring when you feel overwhelmed. And then he says, Lauren, now tell us the truth. Did you take advantage of the bell? And I say, <laughs> I did annoy some people, but yeah, seriously, this is your biggest opportunity to heal. If you have this condition, or remember, that's a blanket term for many types of mental illness. BPD, a blanket um, term for many types of illnesses. We all have them. Your first step is to say to your doctor, look, I understand that these places exist. I've heard from Lauren Hope that the therapeutic community saved her life and made her a peaceful, happy person that can survive in our world. I want to get in there, even though I know it's not going to be a piece of cake. And then people email me through my website. I'm allowed to support people since I'm a former member of the community. I do not believe for one minute you can medicate BPD because it's a complex needs disorder. You cannot medicate 100 different conditions at the same time. And that's what I said to Casey. And, right, and Casey says, right, there's no wonder drug that can handle it. Lauren, people should know they're not on their own. There are thousands of millions of people out there like you. There are forums on Facebook. Joining the community is a step towards a new awakening. This was four years ago, three years ago. I believe you go through a metaphorical crucifixion where it's the most painful thing you can go through. But then you have your resurrection. Today, you're in resurrection. You come alive again, you're reborn. Obviously, they need to create more therapeutic communities. It would be good if they put money into it, you know, rather than spending your money on more medication. As it is now, there is no funding for continued support once you leave the community, which is unfortunate. Okay, so that's reading a snippet from Simply Amazing. And if you want to get the book or invite me to talk, <laughs> invite me to talk on Zoom or on your programs, whatever, this is... Simply Amazing, the book. And I'm going to put out my story today for all of you again. Two White Blondes, the story of recovery in the therapeutic community. Um, 
I never went backwards. I do have my breakdowns and I go through times when I get scared, like all of us, from frequencies that I can't seem to be able to understand yet. Someone is trying to teach me and I'm doing my best to try and understand it so I can teach everyone. I believe everyone deserves this knowledge to stay alive and well. But we are living in a similar situation. We're living in a therapeutic community and a pressure cooker. And the way I recovered was I surrendered. That was it. And something said to me, why don't you go to the shop? Why don't you stand outside, Lauren, in the queue? Wear a mask. Be a sheep. Sorry, again, I'm just saying. Wear a mask today. What would happen if you wore a mask? What would happen? But their ego says, oh, God, you know, I'll be one of that lot. People would think I'm stupid. People would think I'm an idiot. People would think I'm a slave. I'm no one's slave. But what if the opposite happened? What if I wore a mask and I felt different? What if I felt liberated like I did in the therapeutic community? Is this the next awakening? Should I take a piece of clothing, put it over my face, and let this happen? Go down to the shop, do the shopping. Put a piece of clothing over my face. Not say anything, be humble. That part of me wants to start going, <laughs> no way, I'm not doing that. No way, I'm no one's slave. But what if that's the answer? What if we actually did it? Not because we're bowing down to them, but because we're bowing down to surrendering to something that's saying to us, there may be some other answer here. The same way that I surrendered in the therapeutic community. Wow, what a revelation. A new spiritual awakening. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and I'm going to stand in the rain and get a cold just to get into a shop if I don't feel that's right for me. I'm not saying that I'm going to go out there and make a mask and, and basically, as an experiment, see what happens. What will happen? I'm not saying I'm going to do that today. I'm not saying I'm going to do it tomorrow. But if you see me wearing a mask, could it be that that's not, that I'm not bowing down to that lot? Okay, let me give you another example. Victor Frankl. Oh my God, this is all coming to you. I'm co taking you into the light. Viktor Frankl, the guy who survived the Holocaust. Why did he survive the Holocaust? Why didn't they shoot him or gas him with the rest? Because he wore a metaphorical mask. Okay? He did not bow down to them. He bowed down to God. He bowed down to something that made him humble. He bowed down to something that said to him, could it be that whoever is telling you to wear a mask is trying to get you to access something in you, not to buy into what they're trying to put you through, but the humility. He was in the Holocaust. He did puzzles and quizzes in the Holocaust. Viktor Frankl, if he's still alive, I don't know. I'd love to bring him on. I do know that uh, my friend Werner was in the Holocaust, and he's in Simply Amazing. I don't think it would be a problem to interview him, and maybe I should. How does someone get through the Holocaust? They wore a metaphorical mask. Is that the answer? Humility to something that knows why we're being put through this. Not to bow down to say I'm a slave, but to say I am humble to God. I am humble to whatever put me through nearly two, a whole year, eight months of suffering to get total inner peace. 100% when I surrendered, when I realized that it was up to me, something switched in me. I woke up in the middle of the night and I, something switched in me. Maybe something has switched in me today. I don't feel it yet. 
I don't feel that total inner peace that I did when it switched in me. Maybe the light bulb was going off in a different way. Maybe it'll happen tonight. But something inside me knows that I am getting physically ill because of a lot that's going on around me, because I'm tired, and because I'm fighting. I'm fighting. And that part of me gave up the fighting, surrendered, and got totally in the peace. Not because I went into denial, but because I accepted something in me. I accepted that I'm not guilty for what happened to me as a child. So what is it about what's going on now? And it didn't happen through sitting for two weeks meditating. No, it came from being in life, being with people that were bullying me, continuously tough love. It came from something in me that said, why does everyone hate me? And from the huge fear of losing my space in the community because I would have been finished. There was nowhere for me to go after that. If you get thrown out of the therapeutic community after eight months, I would have just disintegrated and there's no way I would have made it. I would have been on medication and, and this body wouldn't have taken it. So now I'm there again. Two weeks of meditation is not going to give it to me. People are saying go into meditation, go into silence. No. That's not how I got my spiritual healing in the therapeutic community. I got it by being in life by suffering, by going through life and the processes. That's how I got 100% inner peace, which lasted for about 10 months, nearly a year. Because when I left, of course, life hit me again and again. And then I used other techniques, like I used the violet flame, I used the healing codes. And until my, the family cut me off, I was able to deal with that very well. Now I'm back there to a certain extent with the physical body suffering and so I'm back there again a new lesson I want a long life I want to be healthy I want to earn money I want to understand the things I didn't learn yet I want to vibrate so that that doesn't affect me I want to vibrate that whatever happens to me never affects me again I want to live to be 120 years old, maybe more. People do live that long. Why not? Who told you you couldn't? So it's not about what you eat here. It is about minerals and that, you know, I am having this tested. But the most important thing I'm trying to say to you here is I recovered 100%. I was completely different in that community overnight after eight months of chaos and madness and wearing that mask that they told me to wear over my eyes and it was still going on in here in my heart and I was processing and trying to feel helplessness and I felt the helplessness I felt helplessness now I feel helpless totally helpless totally helpless feel helpless Wear that metaphorical mask, or even wear a mask. Surrender, but don't surrender to them. Surrender to your heart. Surrender to love, to surrender to God, surrender to you in, a humili in humility. Humility. One of the people that has the least egos of all is Mitchell Nicholas Gerber. He's the most incredible man. He has no ego, hardly. He gives his life daily to save others. That is someone who really doesn't have an ego. I have an ego, we all have an ego. If he was told to wear a mask, he would probably do it just because he's so humble. I'm not humble, I fight everything. You know, the reason I had a serious injury when I fell is because I struggled with my leg. So now I'm struggling again, and I'm telling you, this is the struggle is because we think that if we surrender, we're surrendering to that lot. We're not. You're surrendering to love. And I'm saying this here, and tomorrow I may go on again and 
say everything that I say the other side because there's so many things that we need to learn and I'm learning but could it be that the reason I had that massive awakening was not because of two weeks of surrendering and meditation I've done 10 day retreats and I've never healed my phys the physical body through doing that I felt worse never felt healthy from that so could it be that living in the chaos like Viktor Frankl like Werner living in a holocaust we are now living in a holocaust we're living in the 30s it's very similar for some of us could it be that if you did just go along with it not because you're stupid not because you're an idiot not because you're what they call a sheep but could it be that you're doing it because you're humble and you're not humble to the system you're not humble to um, whatever is trying to destroy the human race you're humble to love you're humble to God you're humble to your heart you're humble to that part of you that healed that part of me I healed 100% in the therapeutic community if I say TC therapeutic community could it be could it be that now we're on the cusp of healing everything that that will not even affect you won't affect you because you'll be too vibrating in such a level of 5d at some point you won't be able to be affected nothing will make you sick if you take the right minerals if you take the right vitamins if you detoxify but you don't have to go into weeks and weeks of meditation to be able to live in this world because that's not what I did and we all tick differently some people knew, do need to do that and can do that I'm saying to you that you can do it with the madness you just have to detach with love or you have to let it overwhelm you like it overwhelmed me in the therapeutic community and then the magic happened one day when they tried to get rid of me so unfairly and I had to question why and that's when the light bulb went off and the guilt left me and then I was free and so I'm there again now I have a problem with the glands and the glands are about balance <laughs> balance I think one of the reasons I'm still here on the planet is because my husband's a Libran I could not live with anyone else Libran balance you? <laughs> Librans balance you. They bring you into balance. Because without Libra in my life, it's very difficult without balance. And if you're like me, a warrior, an indigo, as I said in, in um, my show, How to Stay Sane in a Crazy World, how can you survive if you're an indigo, a warrior, Irish, Jewish, Russian, grew up with abuse, <laughs> got a label, mental health, couldn't have kids, couldn't work, <laughs> loads of talents were given you but you weren't allowed to work. <laughs> How are you supposed to survive? I love you and I feel for you and I hope this resonates. Keep watching, keep liking, subscribing and sharing. We're growing, we're growing. Come on Moving On TV, tell me about your awakenings. I might do a program called Your Awak- well I am doing spiritual messengers, uh, spiritual messages of light who do you think you are and they're coming on the next one is um dina nefuentes i think is coming on on thursday to do her story she's totally awake people are coming on all the time i need an editor i won't say i need please send me an editor that will barter <laughs> send me an editor that will barter so i can sleep because this has got to go on now. I promise you the awakening every single day. And, and then I'm going to break down the questions and answers into short little questions and answers for you to send out. My intelligence is telling you it. But I'm also telling you now that I'm starting to believe that healing comes from surrender. Total 100% surrender. So that's where I'm going to leave you now. And I'm going to do a Sri Baba card, which is all about surrender. I'm surrendering today. I'm saying whatever comes up I'm saying I've told people and they're listening if people really want to be in your life they will listen 
They will take some stuff on board. If you're on a similar vibration, they will listen. If not, then you can't help them. You can't help them. Right, it's upside down. I am immortal. Oh my God. I am immortal upside down, Martin. I just said, yeah. I want to live to be 120. I want to learn how to live forever. Because I was told I have to die at a certain age. I have to get sick. No rubbish, no way. I will heal this body without medicine. I will heal this mind as I do without medicine. We don't need medicine anymore. It's gone wrong. Yes, if you break a leg, we haven't got to the level of putting our bones back together, but you can heal yourselves. And it came up upside down. I am immortal, which means I do not believe it. I am immortal. Not only inside, but this body is immortal. And I'm trying to convince myself that it's immortal. And if I believed it, then I would feel that I could live forever. We could all live forever if we want to. Why not? Who told you that you've got to die young? Them. That lot. So, a very clever man said to me, be a shepherd. And that helps wake more people up. And the indigo in me is saying, I can't be a shepherd, I'm an indigo. I need to push people, I'm a catalyst. Wake up. But today I'm telling you to surrender as well. <laughs> surrender. Surrender to the intelligence inside of you that is immortal. So let's all go out there and have wonderful long lives. Whatever happens, we will not be affected by anything. We will learn how to make this body a castle, a fortress, such a strong fortress together. If there are those of you out there that know how to do it, then teach us. I'm ready to learn because I am immortal. I want a long life. I want my loved ones to have a long life. I can't, my cats, <laughs> the body that we're attached to. Let's see what the synchronicity is today with how. <laughs> I, you know, honest, open and willing. <laughs> Isn't that everything I'm doing today and the last couple of days? Honest, open and willing. The synchronicity is just mind blowing. Mind blowing. I'm very lucky. I have people in my life that give me the opportunity to say, today I will be honest with someone and say how I feel so I can feel I have healthy boundaries and I can lead a better, more balanced life. <laughs> I did that today with someone I care about who I felt was being very dishonest with themselves and me. And my partner, my husband, you have to do this and I'm doing it with you. <laughs> The last couple of days. I can't wait to get back on Facebook Live. I'm going to be doing this every day. You're going to be inundated by how to stay sane the crazy world cards. You can get them from me. You can get them from the Positivity Centre in Ashton Lane, Burnham. Same as the book. I channeled them after I did the book. They're 12 pounds and they're common sense every day. How to live in this madness surrendering in your own way but sometimes we have to fight and I may come on here tomorrow and and say you know that lock can f off and whatever <laughs> I'm an indigo I'm proud of it I am so proud of the fact that I'm an indigo and I love you and I love the human race and I'm not afraid to say to people what they don't want to hear and if they go or disappear out of my life then Goodbye, they're not ready to learn, are they? But that's good. Because those of you that are ready, I'm ready to learn. When people say to me, though, that go into silence for two weeks and don't work and your body will heal, whatever it is I need to heal at the moment, that silly little 
imbalance that I've got, nothing serious, just a silly imbalance to do with balance, <laughs> lots of balance, um, it's not going to work for me because the therapeutic community work. You have to be in the chaos in order to be able to negotiate it. So I'll keep you informed of whether I go to the supermarket. What shall I wear as a mask? Let me think. Martin, <laughs> what can I wear as a mask? What's the most ridiculous thing you could wear? One of my cats. <laughs> Put the cat. <laughs> what could I wear as a mask? This. I would wear this. <laughs> Put it across my mouth. Simply amazing. One of the biggest results of my life. I don't know. People have already tried every stupid thing imaginable. What about the beautiful crystal? <laughs> Martin. Uh -huh. There's my mother. It's not so scary. Maybe I'll come on tomorrow. Buy me a mask. I'll come on tomorrow. I'll get one from Amazon. And wear it. See what it feels like. <laughs> because the minute you wear it, then everything's going to come up, isn't it? Everything. Everything. All your, what you resist persists. <laughs> so tomorrow, the next day, I'm going to wear a mask for you. And, and how can I talk to you with a mask? I can't. But I will come on maybe wearing a mask. Um, because I'm not resisting anymore. I'm not going to resist anymore. So, we care about you. We want you to take care of yourself. And it's upside down. It means we're not taking care of ourselves enough. That looks to me like a busy... What is that? An armadillo. It's like an armadillo. It's upside down. Messages from heaven. We care about you. We want you to take care of yourself. Whoever is watching this is not taking care of themselves enough. It was upside down. <laughs> anyway, I'm amazed at how this awakening works. I can see through people. You can see through me, some of you, which is great. If you see something in me that you don't want to see in yourself, um, that's your issue. If I see something in you I don't want to see in me, I don't do that anymore. I am aloof, I am a bully, I am attached, I am, I can be cruel, I can hide, I'm scared, I'm angry, I don't believe I'm immortal, there's a part in me like that. I don't believe in what I'm saying, I talk a lot of rubbish sometimes, something inside me believes I talk a lot of rubbish, even though a lot I'm talk, telling the truth. I'm a catalyst. Um, what else am I? I'm a conformer. I'm a slave. Uh, I'm a warrior. I'm an indigo. I am love. I am peace. I am everything. And it's all, these are all identities. Boom, boom, boom. The peace part, the gentleness, the love, the compassion, the heart. That's the real stuff. Let's see what Course in Miracles says today. I think we're going back into another lesson. Course in Miracles. I haven't done Instagram today yet. Uh, Course in Miracles. We're still on a, a, a in, we're still on a review, I think. Um, God is but love, and therefore so am I. By grace I live. By grace I am released. There is no cruelty in God and none in me. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Today, I've had a lot of tough love from someone. Someone very enlightened, and I gave the tough love back. I gave it back, and I feel free. Because I'm not scared to lose anyone anymore. A part of me is strong. When I sit in front of this screen, I feel like I, millions are watching me. At some point, it will be like that listening to what happened to me in the therapeutic community if you guys can get that kind of inner peace wow even if it's just for a moment or a day that's it 
I'm going to leave you with one little thing. Put yourself in the shoes of someone else. Particularly someone else who's showing you what you don't want to look at. One minute, one hour, one day. Just close your eyes and think, okay, I'm going to be that person that is really rattling me or that person that I keep rejecting or that person that is annoying me or saying things that are pissing me off or, or I'm going to be that person that really gets on my nerves. I wish I'd known this when my mother was alive because then I could have loved her and hugged her. I couldn't hug my mother ever. So if I put my, I, I now can because I understand. I understand what she went through. Because when you get to a certain age, you understand it. And she was a brave woman to go through what she went through. So was my grandmother. Brave, courageous women that lost their hearts along the way. But what I'm saying is, put yourself in the shoes of another person. What that means is, okay, let's do a little exercise. Close your eyes. Think of that person that you don't like. It might be me. And think, how does that person think? I've heard that Lauren say to me, okay, Lauren lost her whole family to Carol. Um, she was abused, she went through wars, she was diagnosed, she was, had a lot of bullying, whatever, yada, yada, she doesn't have kids. I wonder how it feels to feel like that. How does it feel to feel like that today? Can I like her just a little bit? I understand it just a little bit. And then put yourself in the shoes of a person that is so scared and doesn't understand that masks are dangerous. And that's why if I did wear one, I'd only wear it as a, you know, to teach you as a, a lesson. I feel sick, the thought of it. That's interesting because that is going to bring up what needs to come up. So tomorrow I'm going to order a mask from Amazon. And I'm going to wear it. And the next day I do the awakening to teach you what you need to learn. Because we learn together. What I learn, I teach. So what I'm saying is put yourself in the shoes of a person that is terrified to death by the media and they're asked to wear a mask. What do they feel like? Can you feel that fear? Can you feel that intense fear that they've been entranced, hypnotized? They have no common sense, they've gone mad. I put out that really funny guy. You can't go to the toilet anymore in London. They've shut all the toilets down. And he says, well, get yourself arrested. Because <laughs> you can go to the police station and there's toilets. <laughs> it's funny. It's true. And then he, he talks about the fact you can go into a shop, Martin, and you can buy a £4,000 worth of a computer. Yeah. But you're not allowed... You're not allowed to go and, uh, and, and, have a, and do a healthy workout or something like that, you know? You're not allowed to, to meditate together. Ridiculous. You can go and do protests and you're not going to get the virus with no social distancing. Or you can, as Kate Shemriani said, you can stand with all these nurses and doctors together, no masks, and never get sick. None of them. But if you go to a Trump rally, you're all going to die. Okay, so put yourself into the um, shoes of that poor person. I love you lots. I'm getting really tired now. I'm going to have to go. Love you lots. Enjoy the awakening. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. <laughs> Send it to anyone you think may need it. Today I'm in a better space I'm, I'm because I'm saying exactly what I feel. I don't care anymore. Why should I care? I went through eight months of bullying. I was in the Israeli army. I ran away from the Israeli army. Why should I care what people think about me? I lost my old family. You're on your own, guys. You need to get strong on your own. Remember that. No one's going to pick you up. No one. No one will pick you up. When it comes down to it, you're on your own. People will pick you up, but then they die. They leave. They have a body. People will die and leave. I want to get so strong that I don't need anyone or anything. Love you lots. Bye.